in a groundbreaking move to enhance healthcare access to uh, four cancer patients, uh, cancer patients rather, the national coordinator of the uh, cancer control program at the Federal Ministry of Health, Uche Umoku, has revealed plans to incorporate cancer treatment into the national health insurance scheme. Speaking at the Nigerian Army Officers Wives Association, NAOWA, a cancer awareness summit in Abuja, Umoku emphasized the government's commitment to providing adequate and affordable health care services to citizens battling cancer. This initiative aims to ensure accessible and affordable health care services for citizens diagnosed with cancer. The government has also introduced the Cancer Health Fund, which has already registered over 2,445 patients and funded treatment for more than 750 individuals. At this point, joining me on the news to discuss this is the co-founder and chief operating officer on Copadi Technology Limited, Dr. Adara Engi. Uh, Dr. Engi, it's nice to have you in our studios. Thank you for having me. Uh, so uh, what do you see as the biggest barriers right now for cancer patients in Nigeria? Uh, we'll talk about um, affordability, accessibility, and uh, the quality of the treatment. So for Nigerian cancer patients, what you must know is that Nigerian cancer patients face a lot of barriers, and you can structure this into three. There's the financial barrier, there's the infrastructural barrier, and then, of course, there's the shortage of speciali specialized um, physicians or specialists. Um, in cancer care. But more importantly is the financial barrier. Cancer treatment or cancer care is financially toxic. I'll give you a bit of context. Um, the average cost of cancer treatment in Nigeria currently, it's around 7 million in government or public hospitals. And in um, private hospitals can be as high, of 10, as high as 10 million naira. And you're looking at cancer care from you know, the time of diagnosis, all of the diagnostic workup that it entails, to surgery, to chemotherapy, and radiotherapy. And so all of this always, um, that financial toxicity always pushes a lot of our patients into poverty. I mean, how many people have 7 million or 10 million, you know, lying around just waiting for cancer to um, take a toll on your family and you spend that much? So it is financially draining, it's financially toxic, and a lot of patients, because they have to pay out of pocket. Now, National Health um, Insurance Scheme currently does not cover or capture any form of cancer treatment. And this is important to note. But luckily, the government is making um, important steps by one of it was the launch of the National Catastrophic Health Fund, which is the Cancer Healthcare Fund that is helping a lot of indigent patients to sort of assess cares, specifically in the government-owned hospitals. That's the tertiary-owned hospital. And I think this is already evident and plain, uh, having a place in National Hospital Abuja. But we still need more patients, you know, to get on board that system. Currently in Nigeria, we see over 125,000 new cancer cases. And so we just only about less than 3,000 patients being enrolled onto that scheme. There's still a huge burden and we can do more. Okay, let's take a bit of a closer look at this. Uh, how prepared is the current cancer care infrastructure and workforce in Nigeria when it comes to handling um, the likely increase in diagnosed cases that we might see once treatment becomes more affordable? So unfortunately, um, just as cancer is financially toxic, there's also a shortage in terms of our infrastructural support and in terms of our um, human resources. For one is that in Nigeria currently, we have less than 90 clinical oncologists and these 90 clinical oncologists, sadly, are only available in 18 out of 36 states in Nigeria. So meaning that 18 states in Nigeria currently do not have a clinical oncologist. An example would be Ogun State that doesn't have a clinical oncologist but sees a high volume of cancer patients. And so you can imagine the number of patients that have to travel from these states that don't have you know, a cancer specialist down to Lagos or Abuja or University of, uh, or UBTH or ABU Zaria. You know, they have to go to these areas where they can get, you know, um, cancer treatment. It's also sad to know that currently in Nigeria, we only have 13 radiotherapy centers that are functional. That is 13 centers that either have a linear accelerator or a brachytherapy machine. And so what that means is that, and out of those 13, you know, radiotherapy centers, nine are government owned, and luckily four are about private owned. But even with those 13, a lot of them experience a lot of downtime, right? Um, in these centers. And so what happens is that there's a huge burden. We can't meet up with the current demand. If we are saying that we have 125,000 new cancer cases every year, 
with just nine machines, less than 90 clinical oncologists, very limited oncology nurses, there's that huge burden um, in terms of human resource and even infrastructurally. So currently we are unable to meet the demand. And so this is a clarion call, you know, to stakeholders, to a lot of um, the government officials, more money, investment needs to go into cancer care to sort of strengthen, you know, our already depleted or limited um, infrastructure. Mm. We see these shortages and, of course, um, you've made appeals now to government. So beyond making treatment more affordable via the NHIS and this call or appeal that you are making, are there policies that you think can be brought on board that can significantly impact um, or improve the quality of health care for cancer patients in the country? Well, yes. Yeah, so there are a lot of policies we can uh, begin to implement. For one is... Um, a lot of my patients that I see, in fact, a good number, 60% of my cancer patients that I see present late, and more than 70% of these patients will die. And so there's this clarion call that firstly, we need to invest in cancer awareness and um, early detection. So prevention, um, ensuring that there are a lot of screening, awareness programs, campaigns, outreaches out there that can actually support a lot of early detection and making sure that these patients come in when they are still in, you know, the early stages that can be treated. Um, secondly will be there is a need for, um, for the government and a lot of funding to be pumped into local research to support all of our indigenous researchers. Um, there's a lot of research that needs to be done, you know, especially with how cancer treatment can be tailored particularly to the African or to the Nigerian patient. And so there's a need for funding and a need for um, funding to support all of these local researchers. I think thirdly, we'll, all, we'll be also supporting innovative um, solutions. One of those innovative solutions will be um, things like our telemedicine platform, and Uncle Paddy offers this. Um, telemedicine platform would allow us to get to those you know, far to reach areas, those underserved communities, those communities where there are no cancer specialists, where there are no clinical oncologists that can still offer you know, second opinion treatment um, um, diagnosis on such patients that can still offer some form of care okay. and support a multidisciplinary treatment. Okay. Um, fourthly would be, um, there's also that call to invest in the residency program, right, in the training of these specialists. So we need to give more incentive to get a lot more people into cancer re residency program. So getting more people into cancer residency program. And lastly, of course, would be, we need to build more cancer centers. Uh, okay. Nine. 13 cancer centers is just too small to meet our current demand. All right, thank you so much, Dr. Dara Enye, for educating us at this time. You're welcome.